Hey everybody, Harry P. from the Driftless Homestead here. Um, we're out in the woods today bringing you another video. Um, we're going to be uh, scouting for some dead ash trees. And then we're going to be also looking for um, some pockets of ironwood. You know, we cut down ironwood trees, one, because the DNR wants us to, but then number two, um, those are the mushrooms that I primary mushroom logs shall I say, those are the hardwood log, logs that I primarily use to grow the shiitake mushrooms. So <clears throat> I'll be hunting those down. I'm just getting into my shiitake season. Uh, I would start shiitake season a lot sooner if I had a way to get into the woods. You know, these hills are really big. Any amount of snow makes it really difficult. So um, I'm hoping to uh, change that in the future and have some type of vehicle that I can get to the top of the hills so I can start getting these shiitake mushroom logs out of the woods earlier. And then the other thing that would help me out a lot would be if I were to have a heated space. So I could cut down the logs a day or two leave them sit for two weeks, and then go into the heated space and inoculate logs. Um, it, it's really what I need to do to scale up to uh, to any size to start selling these things uh, at the uh, <clears throat> farmer's markets or to start drying them on a larger scale so I can get them to you um, via internet purchases. Uh, the other thing that we're doing is, you know, this is a perfect time of year to cut down trees to make firewood. Uh, primarily, what we're cutting down for that is the ash trees right now. We're trying to stay ahead of the emerald ash borer, but uh, they're working at, a, at an unbelievable pace, and it's hard to, hard to keep up with that. I'll show you what a tree looks like when it's infected from the wild ash borer, and... Um, in its process of dying so um as uh, the bug gets in there and the bark really thick the native wisconsin birds in every state that it's been in so far the birds can't figure out how to get to eat these bugs so the bugs flourish and you'll see where the the birds are getting so frustrated trying to find the bugs that they actually pick the bark off the trees and that really makes the tree stand out like a sore thumb, especially in the winter. And then as summertime comes, um, it's the the brightness of the, the bark being picked off. kind of fades a little bit to a gray or whatever. But right now, it really is white against gray. And it really stands out. So um, I'll try to identify a few trees for you. But what I would suggest, if you are <clears throat> anyway interested in going out in the woods or purchasing woods, maybe you've got deer hunting property, is to get yourself a book on trees and start to look around at the trees you have around, around you. All kinds of things you can do out here. Make firewood. You can uh, cut down uh, ironwood trees to make shiitake, grow shiitake mushrooms. You can, um, there's other mushrooms you can grow too. You know, like I've tried, uh, Field of Forest told me that the uh, hackberry are in their book, her magazine, pamphlet, catalog. Um, it says at the hackberry tree, you can grow lion's mane. And I'm very interested in growing lion's mane on logs. And, um, I've tried it on the hackberry, it didn't work out. Um, a universal tree is a sugar maple tree. Uh, we've got lots of those too, but you know, I'm not really into cutting those down, but I'd like to one day get to uh, setting up some maple syrup and making maple syrup. Um, that sells pretty good. So um, there's all kinds of things out here you can uh, harvest. There's, uh, we have uh, white birch trees that don't grow to any marketable size. You can cut those down, you can make kindling. Um, I don't know if you know, but the bark on a white birch tree has oils in it that makes it really flammable. So it's a great fire starter. So let's take a look around the woods.
Here's a tree I'd like to show you right away. This is um, one that needs to get cut down as well as a weed tree. This is uh, called a muscle wood tree. If you feel it, it feels like it's uh, it's smooth. There's hardly any rough edges on the bark. And it's very rippled, kind of like a, a, a muscle would be in an arm. They usually grow, grow in a cluster like this, and they spread out. <clears throat> the reason why they're weed trees is... They get, they spread out into a, a crown that really, uh, really shades out the ground from the good trees coming in. So if you look there, you'll see an ash tree right there where the bark is picked off from the birds because that one's really infected with the bugs. So as you drive around your city in the Midwest, You'll see some of these ash trees. They won't look like these because the city trees get wider. But um, <clears throat> you'll see that the top of the quarter to a third of the tree will have no leaves on it in the summertime. And then all of a sudden, uh, that'll be like the first or second year that the bug's in there. And then the following year, you won't get any leaves at all. So let me show you the bark up close on these trees. So you can see what they kind of look like. It's an ash tree. They kind of have a kind of a hash pattern to them. This one here is a slightly different color because of the uh, lichen on there. But you can see here where the birds have been picking off the bark, trying to get at the ash borer. And then you'll also see. Oh, where the uh, bugs go in or come out, there'll be a hole in the bark, and it's usually shaped like a D. So I'm going to cut this one down. I'll show See that little guy there? This one coming up right here, and it goes up this way. I can see that that's got quite a bit of bark picked off. I'll let my camera refocus here. That's got quite a bit of bark picked off already, too, so... Um, next time out, I'll probably take that one too. You know, a lot easier to handle at that size. Um, some of the ones we were cutting down last year, I don't know, got to be 36 inches around. They were giant trees, so um, <clears throat> a little bit harder to handle, but they get going good. Here's a nice example of a tree. I have these um, scattered throughout. This is a hackberry tree. You can see how the bark is kind of standing up real tall. Um, the forester tell me the tree is good for nothing. I don't know if you can see that bark better like this. But you can see how it's got these really high ridges on there. Um, it grows to a pretty big, pretty big tree. Uh, Chris in the wood yard, he says that it's a good firewood tree. I haven't tried to burn any yet. Um, I've just cut these down uh, to grow this size to try and grow my uh, lion's mane on it. It didn't work, so I'm going to have to cut some, get some maple. So I'll find somebody doing a forestry project. I think we're a couple years out from logging yet. So that's when I'll be able to use my own trees for that. So have a good one. Well, that's all we have time for today, folks. Please like, subscribe, share. You know, tell me what you got going on in your woods. You know, what are you doing for timber stand improvement? Let me know in the comments down below if you have the emerald ash borer in your woods and what you're doing. If you're just letting the trees go to, you know, die and rot. Um, as a tree really gets infected, I try to take it down. I went past a couple of ash trees that didn't look like they were infected, so I left them go, you know, because... We have a hard time keeping up with the ones that have a bad infection now, so um, it'll keep the wood going if we leave it go for now. So let me know what you think. Let me know how you would do things differently. And like, comment, subscribe, and share with your friends. Um, it will help make this uh, a better experience. Talk to you guys later.